Okay, Jacob's Ladder on the uh, new Trail 429. This is probably my seventh or eighth time riding Jacob's on this bike. I've had this bike for three weeks now, and man, I really, really like it a lot. I'm always impressed by these kind of mid to short travel 29ers. They're always more capable than I think they're gonna be. They climb really well, they just do everything well. If you can only own one bike at a time, man, I could build a case for this being it. All right, super stoked to be riding the uh, brand new Trail 429. It's uh, replacing the Mach 429 Trail uh, that Pivot previously made. Uh, but honestly, it feels like a whole new bike. Um, they went with uh, super boost rear spacing on that rear triangle. So uh, instead of the regular boost 148 millimeter spacing, it's got 157 millimeter spacing. I think they did it in an effort to stiffen the bike up and I gotta say after about 150 miles on this bike over the last three weeks, this is one stiff bike. Really fast in the turns and the harder you push this thing, the more it just absolutely rails, it just goes. A lot of that is because how stiff this bike is. Uh, in terms of climbing, um, I ended up swapping out the tires that came on this bike stock. Uh, they were just kind of a little bigger than what I needed and, and more, more tired than what I felt like this bike kind of asks for. I'm sure there's some reason that Pivot put it on there. Um, oddly enough, not to talk too much about the Ibis Ripley, but uh, new Ripley comes with 2.6 tires also. So maybe it's a trend that some of these bike manufacturers are kind of going in that direction on these kind of middle to shorter travel 29ers. One thing to know on the new Trail 429 is it's definitely a longer bike. The reach is longer, the bike is longer. Um, it picked up a little bit more travel. It's at 120 millimeters of travel in the rear now. I'm five foot eight riding a size medium. I did shorten the stem. It comes with a 55 millimeter stem. I put on a 40 millimeter stem because this is uh, among the longer bikes that I've ever ridden. Uh, last thing maybe I'll note about the bike specifically and then you can just head over to the website and read all you want about it and geek out about the numbers is Got a little bit slacker in the head tube angle. The chain stays got significantly shorter, but they still kept the bottom bracket kind of high. Whatever Pivot did on this bike, it just works for me. I picked up this bike from Salt Cycles in Sandy, Utah. Uh, they are Utah's the largest Pivot dealer. Have a bunch of these in stock ready to go. So if you're local, head over there and talk to Chris, get a demo uh, and see what you think. Um, and that's another great way to support the channel is, you know, Salt Cycles has really stepped up in getting me this bike for three weeks so I could really do a more in-depth, longer review, uh, do a 100-mile review. So a great way to support me is to support them. Uh, go check out your bike from Salt Cycle. This DW Link stays really high in its travel when you're when you're bombing so you don't feel the bottom of this bike really ever and the type of terrain that we're riding here has got some kind of one to two foot drops a lot of that kind of six inch chattery type stuff and it's high speed you know we'll reach about max speed of just over 30 miles an hour heading down this section up here in a little bit and we'll average the entire three minute uh, segment of trail Average close to 25 miles an hour. A lot of braking bumps through this section. There we go. But it doesn't feel harsh. It, it, it's not like an overly plush bike. But man, for 90% of the trails out there that I ride, this is plenty of bike. And it's just really, really efficient and precise. Okay, so up there on Jacob's Ladder is some of the more rowdier stuff that we're gonna be riding today. Uh, most of this stuff down here is just smoother flow buff trails. Um, kind of seems like what a lot of people spend a lot of time riding. And that's where this bike absolutely rips. Um, 
this thing is so fast down here on these trails and it's so just laser precise it's a very very stiff bike and you just feel how just how much power goes through these wheels you can just carve it up really well i love it through this whole section Oh yeah, this type of stuff is what this bike is made for. Comparing this bike to the old Mach 429 trail, this bike feels a lot stiffer, more capable. The overall geometry just feels so rad. Oh yeah. And if you can only own one bike, that's the type of bike I think that makes the most sense. This bike is so capable, fast everywhere, and really, really fun. Nice. Pivot puts right there on their shock, that rear shock there, they uh, put a little sagometer thing with a red line and a blue line. And the blue line is supposed to be a little bit more pressure and so a little bit less overall sag. And the red line is supposed to be a little bit more plush. Having messed around with that, I definitely like the way this bike rides better, setting it up at the blue line. So less overall sag. Comes in two colorways. Uh, the blue, which is the one I've been riding, and it also comes in a kind of a red color. Both of them are a matte finish, um, but they don't look like maybe the traditional matte finish. It almost looks like a Crayola crayon, like kind of a waxy looking matte finish, uh, if that makes sense. The other thing that I've really noticed over the last three weeks of riding this bike is just how hard, you, the harder you push it, the better it gets. And it's precise. Whatever about amount of like, just body English you put into this bike, a little bit of rider input, it just responds so well. Uh, just very sharp feeling sharp and precise I don't know if that's if I'm communicating that properly but I guess my point is is it does exactly what you tell it to do like this whole section that I'm pumping just so responsive it's not as forgiving as Maybe a little bit longer travel bike. But I actually really like that. Just responds well to the easiest, most minor amount of input. Ah, that was freaking fun. I guess that's maybe the other point I'll make is because it's such a nice because it's such a, like a stiff and very precise bike you know it is a little bit less forgiving maybe but anyone coming from like a racing background or who's been on a shorter travel yeah if you've been on like a shorter travel bike like a hundred mil of more cross-country bike coming to this you're gonna have that same really compliant pedaling platform but way better geometry, more travel than what you're used to. I think that's who this bike is really for. Someone who has been on a cross country bike, but they want to start kind of pushing the limits more, going faster downhill and getting a more dedicated trail bike. That's who this bike is for. Man, I actually might have to buy this bike. I have loved riding this for the last three weeks. Ah, oh, that was fun. Dude, that was awesome. So good. Well, I've, I've really enjoyed riding this bike the last three weeks. Uh, 
It keeps up on the climbs with all the guys riding 100 mil race bikes like Zach in front of us right now. He's riding a 100 millimeter Cannondale scalpel. Uh, but it still descends with the guys who are riding the, the bigger long travel bikes. This type of bike is the just do everything, every man's bike. Uh, really enjoyed riding it this last couple weeks. Hey guys, just got back from my ride on the new Pivot Trail 429. It replaced the previous Mach 429 Trail, but in my opinion, it's a completely different bike. Slacker head angle, steeper seat tube angle, super short chain stays. It's now 120 in the rear instead of 116, 114, whatever it was on the, on the Mach 429 Trail. And I, I really liked it a lot. Um, it's a really, really rigid, stiff feeling bike. Very compliant. Any guys out there riding 100 millimeter cross country race bikes are gonna love this. Uh, I mean, if you're, if you're looking for something more capable and more trail worthy than like a 100 millimeter cross country bike, this gives you that same feel, like really stiff and very uh, rigid feel but uh, much more capable, much better geometry, and, and gives you more confidence going at speed, more stable bike. The harder you push this bike in those turns on the more smooth, packed out buff trails, it just hammers, like, like almost like no bike I've ever ridden. It's a very, very compliant and responds very well to any rider input when you turn it or, or lay it over. Um, it just feels like it hooks up really hard in the corners and I really, really like that. One of the downsides of that is that it's not as a, a forgiving of a bike. Um, it's a little shorter travel, 120 and 130 in the front. Um, and I guess that's the thing I love the most about it, but it's also the thing that some people might not love about it is it's not quite as forgiving as maybe a longer travel bike, but for 90% of the trails I ride, this is the bike I think I'd want to be on of all the bikes I've ridden. I really, really like it. Um, it climbs really well. Um, it climbs, in my opinion, as well as the Ibis Ripley, which is kind of the standard for these mid-travel uh, 29ers. And uh, it climbs really well. I think, I think it climbs just as good as the old uh, you know, Mach 429 trail that it replaced. Just left it in the open position the whole time and it climbs really, really well. You can buy this bike as a 29er like the one I have here or as a 27.5 plus tire. Although I think more people will find this bike interesting with 29 inch wheels. Um, I think I mentioned in the video, I swapped out the tires to a lighter uh, tires than what comes spec on the bike just because I, I thought it would be lighter and, and more efficient climbing and just more, more playful. Um, it was a really playful, fun, poppy bike. I, I thought it was just about the perfect bike. I mean, the internal cable routing is quiet. It looks really clean. The paint job is incredible in both the red and the blue one like I have here. Um, you can also buy it with a DPX2 uh, piggyback shock uh, um, and you can also ride the fork at 140 mil mine's just the dps with the the 130 that i've been demoing the type of person i think buys this bike is probably that guy looking for something that really blurs the lines between their cross-country bike and a full-blown you know 140 150 mil travel uh trail bike um if you're coming off of a cross-country bike, I think you're going to love this bike with how stiff this rear end is and how compliant the whole bike is to any rider input. I think that's the type of person that's going to really love this bike. Jacob slatter has got a lot of one, one and a half foot, almost two foot drops that are, you're going 25 miles an hour down. And this feels, I feel totally confident on this bike just hammering that stuff. Um, for most people out there, this is the type of bike that I think is going to be the one you want to grab and ride every single day. This is an every man's bike. Go do anything on it and you're going to have a good time. I really liked it. I think this, this is the type of bike that I would want to own if I could only own one bike. I think I keep saying that. It's a good time to be a mountain biker. 120, 130 mil travel 29ers that just do everything really well and climb just incredible. Head into your local Pivot dealer and check it out or, or catch the Pivot demo truck when it comes in your town and give it a rip. Um, I had a fun time making this video today. I hope it was helpful. If it was, like it and share it with your friends. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.